G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's Jesse here and today I'm going to be taking you through my official Top 40 Phantom Draft for next week's big day. I would say big day, actually it's two big days now. Um, and of course I will be joining you guys on a live stream for both of the draft days next week. But for now, I'm, I always do love to do a Phantom Draft every year. And while I absolutely can't guarantee that it's going to be a perfect prediction, obviously it's really hard for anyone to nail the draft, even the biggest experts, I still find it fun to, to smash out a quick top 40. So today I'm going to take you through the top 20 and, and justify all my selections a little bit more. And then I'll rattle you through picks 21 to 40 as well, just at the end. Um, and I'm also going to make this available on Bigfooty and stuff like that for you guys to check it out. So if you haven't seen it on the channel yet or you're new to the channel, perhaps uh, if you check out our most recent videos, we've been doing draft content a lot lately. And in particular, we've done a couple of podcasts previewing it. The last one, we did have a guest who's an actual football writer in WA talking to us about all the top prospects. So go check that out. It should be the last video on this channel. But anyway, guys, let's crack into the first round of the draft now. I've made it pretty juicy. There's going to be a few surprises. A few are based on just some gut feel and a few based on a few rumors I've heard. There's going to be some surprises, so try not to hate me too much because, you know, let's face it, there's going to be surprises on draft night as well. But let's start from the top. And first of all, the first two selections are probably the two easiest of the draft, Matt Rowe will be going to the Gold Coast Suns. He and Noah Anderson at pick two are probably already, you know, <laughs> virtually already there at the Gold Coast. Um, so Matt Rowe is a 180 centimeter midfielder and Noah Anderson is another midfielder. Of, he's about six foot three, so he's a big body. And, uh, you know, I, I, for where the Gold Coast are at, they kind of had needs all over the ground. They really need to rebuild their midfield, but they need to rebuild their whole list really. Um, and Rowe and Anderson obviously being pretty much best friends. Um, there's also the go-home factor as well. So an absolute no-brainer, the, the first two picks. So Melbourne's pick three is arguably the first live selection, some are saying, because everyone thinks it's a given. Gold Coast are taking the other two boys. And Melbourne, for me, I'm going to take Luke Jackson. They've been linked to him as well, as we were talking about in the podcast the other day. Obviously, they have Gorn and Proust on the list, but after that, their ruck stocks, particularly in under, 20, well, under 24, uh, aren't that strong. And obviously, if they rate him as one of the top talents in the draft, with they, which they seem to, based on you know all the news. I think they will go for like Jack, Luke Jackson at pick three. That means GWS obviously can't take Jackson with pick four, which is what well, I suspect they traded up into the top five to have a crack at Jackson uh, before the Tom Green bid. So I think they're going to take best available, and that's Lockie Ash over Hayden Young. I slightly prefer him. Pick five is Sydney's, and I'm going to match a Sydney bid for Tom Green. So GWS have picked four and five, taking Ash and Tom Green. Pick six is a really tricky one for me. There's a number of different players I think Sydney could take. I don't have them taking Hayden Young. I think they're gonna pick the best available midfielder. And in my opinion, that's Devin Robertson. So he shoots up a little bit higher than some of the uh, some other people might rate him, and I think they're going to take uh, who they might deem to be the best available pure on baller, and he's a sort of inside-outside mid, predominantly inside, to be honest, um, and his ball use is it's tidy, but it's not, it's not amazing. Uh, but nonetheless, he won the Lark medal. He's a supreme talent, and Sydney will be very happy for him. Pick seven, maybe another surprise. Now that Adelaide has traded down, I've got them taking Fisher McCasey or Mackesy. The, the pronunciation still gets me. Adelaide are obviously trying to shortcut a little bit of a mini rebuild here and refresh talent through the list. And with Alex Keith moving on, Daniel Talia is not exactly super young anymore. I think he must be like 28 now. Fisher McCasey is definitely the best available tall talent on the list available. I could potentially see Geelong making a late play to trade for this pick seven if Mackesy is still on the board, which of course most people are expecting he will be. Uh, so if, if it's Adelaide's pick and Mackesy on the board, I could see Geelong offering 14 and 17. I'm not going to bother with live trades in this Phantom Draft. The other team that could potentially trade up for Mackesy is the Hawks, who have a future first to potentially move up the order. I don't think they necessarily should or would do that. But uh, for all intents and purposes today, I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm going to say Adelaide take Maxi. That leaves Frio with two picks in a row and that makes it really interesting for them. And I've tossed and turned about these picks for them. Everyone was talking about Jackson and Robertson for them. Now in this scenario, both of them are off the board. So I'm going to go with Hayden Young, who's the best available talent. He's a general defender and probably the best kick in the draft. And Fremantle needs uh, good foot skills, that's for sure. And they're going to pick another talented outside skillful player in Dylan Stevens with the next pick. Um, so I think they'll be really happy with that. Pick 10 is a little bit of a mini slider. That's Sam Flanders. I think he will be a good pick for Carlton here because he, as a midfielder at forward, has a bit of a point of difference from their existing young crop of midfielders. Melbourne then have the next selection, and I think they're going to go for a small forward here. They're going to bid on Liam Henry, and I expect Fremantle will uh, match that bid, and therefore pick 11 becomes Fremantle. 
Liam Henry. So that's three really talented kids Fremantle have added to their list. And boy, did they need it after losing Brad Hill and Lockie Neal and all that. So Melbourne is back on the board with uh, another surprise here, I'm going to say. K Kaziah Pickett is going to be an absolute bolter and he's going to join Melbourne at pick 12. A little bit of a rumor there. I think it was Jay Clark reported that and I love it to be honest. And I think Melbourne obviously when they were trying to go for um, Jamie Elliott missed out on him and I don't think Pickett will be available at their next selection which is like 28 or anything like that. Hawthorne is then up and they're going to go for the best available talent even though I said they needed maybe a key position defender. I can just see them picking the guy they want to add to their list, and that will be Brody Kemp, and I know that a few of you on the Discord will be pretty happy with that. He's a real big-bodied mid, uh, 193 centimeters, did his ACL during the season, so he's a real high upside talent, but there's always that risk as well. Pick 14, Port Adelaide take a bit of a slider here. Caleb Sarong, some people rate him as the top five prospects in the, in the in the draft pool. I personally think he is better than what pick 14 would suggest. However, um, he's only 179 centimeters. He's 88 kilos, so fairly developed physically. Maybe that's why he's falling down the draft rankings. Nonetheless, I think Port will be very happy to pick him at pick 14. He's an absolute beauty. The Bulldogs are up with pick 15, and uh, they're another candidate who's probably looking to add a a tall back, so I did consider Josh Worrell. However, they also want a small forward uh, to replace Dowhouse, who left last year, obviously. So Cody Waitman is joining them. I know they're pretty... Well, I've read that they're interested in him and Trent Bianco, but I think Waitman is the guy they will pick on draft night. Pick 16, the Geelong Cats select Miles Bergman, who is kind of like a, a real um, damaging midfielder forward type. He's 189 centimeters, can take a mark, has good skills. I feel like Geelong do kind of like a speculative utility that they can sort of develop into a gun. So he's going to be their first selection. Pick 17 is the Gold Coast Suns, and this might seem a bit lazy because of the family connection, but Will Day will be joining them in my Phantom. Uh, he's a South Australian 189 centimeter outside mid sort of uh, halfback flanker. Obviously, he's a cousin of Gold Coast Sam Day. So I think, again, building that sort of family vibe, trying to, uh, you know, build their retention of players, that could be a factor in their thinking. With Port lurking with two picks in between them and Gold Coast next pick, I think Gold Coast will have to pounce here if they want him. So with pick 18, Port add Trent Bianco. He's a small defender midfielder with good skills. I think he'll really complement some of the guys they picked up last year. Pick 19, the Geelong Cats. They've got Josh Worrell added to their list. I, like I said, uh, at pick 16, they would have been eye off Mackesy if they weren't going to trade up. I really doubt he's going to be there available. So they're going to go with the next best key position, uh, key defensive prospect in my opinion, and that's Josh Worrell. So they'll uh, add Bergman and Worrell. Pick 20, Port Adelaide now add Jeremy Sharp, and this one's a little bit of a uh, an interesting one. I don't know exactly where Sharp's range is. It seems like he could be anywhere between 15 and 35 from what I've read. He's one of my favorite players to watch in the draft. He's a real outside, skillful, and quick type of player, um, and I think Port will be making a... Um, they've added like some skillful players last year, but I think there's a clear strategy there. I think he'll play into their system really well. So that is the top 20 guys. Now I'm going to rattle through the next 20 fairly quickly and just pretty much list them. Otherwise this video will go on far too long. So we got Richmond at pick 21 taking Jay Rantall, who's a midfielder. Gold Coast then take Will Gould, who's a little bit of a slider, the oversized halfback flanker. Trent Rivers joins Brisbane, pick 23. At pick 24, the Adelaide Crows have bid on Finn McGuinness, the father-son from the Hawthorne Footy Club and Hawthorne Matchett, which they have to give up two later picks in the draft for, but I think they'll be very happy Happy adding Kemp and McGuinness to their young midfield stocks. Then Adelaide still have two picks, so they're going to take Cooper Stevens and Cameron Tahaney, a midfielder and a forward combination for Adelaide, who, again, probably just need to refresh some talent all through the ground. Geelong then reach and take Mitch Georgiades, who is a little bit of a bolter, but again, been linked to them. And with Collingwood lurking at pick 35 or whatever it is, Geelong will have to take him here because I think Collingwood has been linked to them very, very strongly. He's 192 centimetre forward. Again, I'm elaborating too much. Sydney, pick 28, takes Sam DeConning to add to their key position depth. They, he's uh, probably the best available talent around that range too. North then double up with Hugo Ralph Smith and Dylan Williams as some X Factor types to add to their uh, growing young list. Melbourne needs some speed uh, in their midfield in particular. And Thompson Dow, brother of Paddy, gets selected at pick 31. Brisbane then add a young key forward in Harrison Jones from Victoria. Sam Philp uh, joins North Melbourne as another sort of X-Factor midfielder. Port Adelaide then match a bid for Jackson Mead. Essendon bid on him with pick 34. So now Port has pick 34 and they take Mead, who's a young 184 centimetre 
Inside mid, son of Darren. Essendon then still looking for a midfielder. They'd take Harry Schoenberg from South Australia, who at 180 centimetres, uh, probably, he's probably better than pick 35 suggests. However, they've got a bit of a steal for him there. Sydney take the forward mid, the small mid forward, Jack Marnie from Victoria. Essendon take Mitch O'Neill, the small midfielder from Tasmania. Darcy Kassar joins the Brisbane Lions at pick 38. Collingwood then take a desperately needed young key forward to add to their list. Obviously, we know they don't really have a really strong, reliable key forward talent on their list. I think they've been linked to Georgiades, as I said. So they're going to take Jake Riccardi, 195 centimeter key forward from Victoria. And the last pick in this phantom draft, Geelong take Flynn Perez, who was, uh, I believe, a fairly highly rated talent at the start of the year. And he's done his ACL and he's 188 centimeter outside mid. And he adds a real point of difference to that young Geelong list. There you go, guys. I hope I didn't rattle through that too quickly. But there you go. That is my top 40 Phantom Draft. If you'd like to see a proper written out version of that, you can actually go have a look on Bigfooty in the Phantom Draft section. This will probably be my last video before the draft. However, I am actually going to create events soon. We're going to do live streaming during the draft, both the first night and the second night. So if you're not particularly into the drive, you can still join in, join in on the stream as I watch it and I'll try and condense it and I'll be able to answer your questions and talk to you all about it. And you know, if you've been on a live stream before with us, it's always really fun. So I hope to see you there. We're still gonna be making content throughout the summer. It might not come quite as quickly, but I'm looking at doing some podcasts with some other YouTubers coming up in the coming weeks and months. So don't unsubscribe for the summer. We're probably gonna do some big bash live streams over the summer as well as just a bit of a hangout uh, while there's no footy to watch. Again, thanks for watching guys and make sure you hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thanks.